Hello and welcome to another One Punch Man Law video and today we are going to take a look at Garou, the real hero of this battle, filled with 8 conventional heroes. But before we're going to do so, let me thank my Patreons for supporting this channel, as well as all users of the YouTube Thanks function for making one-time donations. Also please check out my newest video about cat girls, it's linked down in the video description. Now with that said, let's dive into the topic at hand. But before we take a look at the battle itself, we have to establish the combatants, as in their public perception and how they are actually portrayed within the battle itself. On the side of supposedly clear evil, we have Garou the Hero Hunter, a man who seemingly without a reason assaults heroes and has forsaken humanity in order to ally with a bunch of literal monsters. On the other hand, we have the heroes, protectors of humanity in this unsteady time, the one who keep us safe and protect our kids from monsters. They are the good guys fighting a good war for a just cause. And this portrait isn't necessarily wrong, but devoid of any nuance. While the heroes are defending humanity from monsters, the hero association is a rather corrupt place, where hero ranks and the popularity is so sought after that heroes are willing to lie, cheat and crush and even kill weaker heroes in order to avoid them rising beyond their very own ranks eventually. So instead of teaching novices to become as strong and therefore as capable of defending humanity as the more established heroes, the heroes invest their limited time and energy to crush potentially more capable defenders of humanity, thus risking more human lives just to maintain their social standing and income. This extends all the way up to Sweet Mask, the A-ranked hero that sees himself as a gatekeeper of the S-rank. So power, status and income are as important, if sometimes not more important, as actually doing the job that they are getting paid to do. We have seen way before this battle between Garou and the 8 heroes even started, that all of this is not only a thing, but a problem, given how easy the opinion of the public can be swayed by one single voice against an otherwise deserving person. On the other hand, we have Garou, the hero hunter, who had not denied his childhood to put it in a mild way, in an universe where thousands can die at a time through monster attacks, the public naturally has a certain level of stress and in the case of Garou, he got to be the tool to release some of the stress and anxiety. Basically whenever kids would play in quotation marks play monster, multiple kids would gang up upon Garou and while two kids would hold his arms, the third would kick him in the face because he is the monster. Now in the United States, Garou would sooner or later unlock a rare cosmetic item, like a trench coat, and the rest is then best described by the intro of Chainsaw Man. But the point here is that Garou was the one who got attacked repeatedly by humanity for being a figurative monster. And now that we have established the background, let's take a look at the combatants. On one hand, we have a badly damaged Garou, who fought among others against Watchdog Man, aka Saitama in a fursuit, and Saitama himself, both times with predictable consequences. He also had quite high fever, so in other words, before the battle even commences, Garou's body was already reaching his limit. On the other hand, he had to face eight well-arrested heroes, who would all gang up upon him, just like the boys holding his arms so that another boy could kick him in the face. Some of the heroes were tasked with blocking Garou's attack so that the rest could attack Garou himself. And now we come to the final thing, why do both parties fight another? Garou fights in order to keep a little boy safe. After telling the heroes that there's a non-combatant child in the area, 
but the hero simply ignored it, thinking of it as a mere bluff to avoid a fight. On the other hand, these heroes, these noble protectors of humanity, fought in order to prove themselves. After multiple S-ranked heroes had already been hospitalized, the A-ranked heroes wanted to earn glory and prestige by hunting Garou down. And as Garou has put it, the only one who even talked about ranks and social standing was Death Gatling himself. In contrast, Garou literally didn't care, because he fought to protect a child. And the last thing I wanna remark is that Garou never kills anybody. He fights to prove himself, to assert dominance, but he only goes for the knockout in basically every battle, while Death Gatling quite literally wanted to deal the killing blow himself, in which he didn't succeed. And while Garou would ultimately lose, thanks to the appearance of Janos and two at this point literally superior martial artists, his teacher among them, Garou was still able to adapt to the battlefield conditions. Even in his sorry state he managed to emulate Watchdog's man's movement patterns in order to catch Janos by surprise. Only the fact that Janos had already fallen for the trick enables Janos to successfully counterattack. So in conclusion, this right here is quite literally how a great anti-hero is written. And you simply can't help but root for Garou during this battle. And finally, as a Dark Souls enjoyer, I absolutely hate this arrow attack. And with that said, now it's your turn. What are your opinions on the battle? About Garou, the heroes, and of course, about One Punch Man in and of itself. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to... Dash 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 Arder Daddy Arder Bad Guy Ye Bad Burrito 316 Beezer Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Crystal Prime Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987 Devon Downen Ding Dong Duckwagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia the Second, Enigmatic Unicorn, Feral Shivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Moreno, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Lelouch Ribetania with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, Oh Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus Eleven, Rhino Mir, Cune Caracos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rock Ed Smasher, T. E. Wang, Vash Hawkeye, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Zinukai, and Zonagon. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day. And I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.